Hey there, my friends. It's Bill McDonald, the reading and writing doctor. Today, I'm going to do one question from the reading poem that I showed you yesterday. And it's going to be important to help your kids who struggle with reading to zoom in, to hone in on the questions that will be the easiest to answer. I don't really believe in taking the questions one through 30 whatever depending on grade level. I don't believe in always reading the entire passage. If I'm a doctor and I'm giving prescriptions to my patients, I wouldn't give the same prescription to every single one. So if I have kids who are really weak in reading, I'm gonna give them a prescription that's more like surgery instead of Band-Aids. Yes, the test is rigorous, but you can teach your kids to start with the bottom level of rigor questions and then work their way up little by little. So what I'm gonna look at is which question has the least amount of information that I'm going to have to read to be able to answer it. I don't want to read an entire paragraph or stanza. I hopefully won't want to read the entire passage or selection or poem. I want to read maybe one line or two lines or three lines, one sentence. Now, the thing about poems is they don't always have them in sentence form. They don't follow punctuation rules in a lot of ways. And all of the poems from the third through eighth grade didn't have any rhyming structure at all. So you can practice that with your kids, but at least for this round of poems that they gave to everybody, they didn't have a focus on rhyming. It was just, most of them were in first person present tense. One of them was in first person past tense for third grade. So. Let's take a look and I'm going to share my rules. Uh, hundreds of you went ahead and ordered the special binder that I have on sale for the next five days. And it comes with this for free as an attachment rules for reading. And if you think of a checklist of reading like a meal, then rules would be R the appetizer, U the meat, L and E the two vegetables, and S the dessert. So basically, if you, get, if you give your kids snacks or food to eat for following strategies, then you tell them, well, I don't give you dessert unless you do all of the strategies that I ask you to do. And so when we're looking at the question that we're going to go over, we want to go over the one that has its least amount of quantity. And so I'm hopefully going to find one that's one sentence or a couple sentences. And in the case of a poem, perhaps even one or two lines. So I already looked through the poem and I decided that we're going to do number five in the poem. So we're gonna read the poem softly or loudly, we'll underline any important information and we'll label. So the question that this one was like in third grade last year only got 45, 47% correct. That means not even half the kids in Texas knew how to tackle this kind of a question. And so I think it's interesting that even though it required the one of the least amounts of quantity of reading, the kids probably didn't understand the question well enough to be able to handle it. So I'm gonna show you a way to help your kids and it's gonna come down to the importance of labeling uh, certain things that we see as we're reading and underlining. So the question says, which lines, plural, of the poem best show why 
all the questions are related on related to the, the who, what, when, where, why, which, or how, you can pretty much tell that even if they're in the form of a statement, you, you'll be able to see that uh, you can pretty much understand that the questions are based on one of the W's. Let me just look at this one real quick. In lines one through four and line 76 for the placement and repetition of single uh, words are meant to emphasize in other words, why is the repetition of single words on those lines and those lines there? So this one is a why as well. And so why does the speaker, and the reason I put a little stick man there is, what's the subject or who is the subject of, this, of the question? And I circled their little head and said, oh, whoever this person is, the speaker is the subject and then I'm gonna draw why the speaker what? Enjoys popcorn, okay? Now, what I want you to think about is the word words, okay? The word words or word starts with a W, as you see there, and I underlined the W. Whenever a question asked about somebody having a positive or a negative experience about something, that's the author's voice or the writer's voice or the character's voice. So if you take the W of words and separate it, you get two Vs. And so there's a voice that's inside my heart. And we use the red heart for that called my feelings and my emotions about popcorn and my voice that's inside my head, my thoughts and my opinions, my voice in my head. There's a saying that I like to say or add to a saying, don't judge a person until you've walked a mile in his shoes because inside his shoes are his toes, T-O-E-S, that's his voice. And so toes, if you think of T, that's T for thought, O for opinion, E for emotion, the S, the five senses or the things you say. So depending on my view of the world, my point of view, my perspective, I might say things based on who I am. And so if I enjoy something, I put a plus arrow because that's a, po that's a positive emotion or an opinion. And so all I need to find out is which one of these sets of lines, A, B, C, or D, kind of allows me to see that the speaker, the subject, enjoys popcorn, the predicate. Line A only has three lines, seven, eight, nine. Letter B has only two lines, 22, 23. Letter C has two lines. 31, 32, and letter D has four lines. So four plus three is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. If I only have to read 11 lines out of the entire play and I'll be able to figure out which one of those focuses on me being able to figure out why the speaker, the subject of this poem and enjoys popcorn. So let's take a look first at lines seven through nine, okay? So I'm going to place right here a little bracket, five, six, seven, okay? I'm going to put question number five, and because five is an odd number, I know that it's going to be A, and just so you can verify with me, there's an A right there, seven through nine. So what does it say? The content, when the contents of my little white bag turn from seeds to popcorn, okay? Because that's just an action. That's not a heart or a head connection. That's not any voice. That's just something that happens. I won't need to choose or keep letter A in there at all. Let's take a look at letter B. 
lines 22 and 23. So I'll come down, there they are. Make my little bracket. And I'll put question number five again. This is just me proving to my teacher that I'm labeling based on where they're telling me to look, okay? The amazing opinion, aroma of the extra butter and the gallon of delicious opinion. So if I'm saying something's amazing and something's delicious, that's not true. That's my opinion. And so because that is part of my point of view and perspective, that's those are both head connections, then it's possible that letter B could be the answer. We heard amazing. And we read delicious, very tough spelling for some kids, sometimes even adults. This was just some facts. Those were just some details uh, that happened. So we'll eliminate A up here. And we think we're going to pick this because there's two head connections, two opinions there. And if you're saying something's amazing, or delicious, that's a positive emotion, so it does match. Let's look at line 31 and 32. We always got to be sure that we don't have a distractor. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Uh, put it on this side. Q number five, letter C. The butter is still melting. Okay. Melting butter is an action, something that happens. It's a sequence of an event. The aroma is rising to my nostrils. That's something that's happening. A lot of things can rise to your nostrils, but you might not enjoy that aroma. So that's sort of a neutral line right there. Butter melting is not even uh, an emotion. There, so there's nothing there really that we can pick. That could be an answer. So I'm going to eliminate C. That means I only got one left to analyze. It's got four lines. So it'll be the hardest one for some kids. Lines 18 through 21. And again, like I said, if I just look for the question that has the least amount of quantity, I've already eliminated one, two answers. I think I'm going to select. We've already labeled inside the passage the the poem we've underlined in there and we've read in there so when we've read in both places question and poem underlined in both places and labeled we get to put two check marks we've eliminated two so far so let's take a look at lines 18 through 21 to see why it will be the answer or why it won't be all right here we have quotation marks where the author the speaker is talking and he's saying, ouch. Ouch is a negative thing that people would say. Ah, ow, oh, ah could be positive or negative. But when you connect it with ow, that's another negative. Oh, we might have to rewind. Dee, 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 dee. Let's find out why he's saying these things. My fingers are burning. I can barely touch it without shouting out. So apparently the popcorn is so hot, it's causing his fingers to burn and the speaker to say those things. Since those are negative things, that's not me enjoying the popcorn. That's just me having a negative experience before I actually get to eat it and enjoy it. So I'm going to place my letter there. This would be Q number five letter D, and I'm going to eliminate that because that's a negative uh, dialogue sequence that's spoken as an effect. There's the cause and there's the effect, something that you might say. So a real quick teachable moment. On a teeter-totter, we could place the cause on one side and the effect on the other side. Since the effect was them saying, ouch, 
and ah and oh, oh let's find out what caused it the fingers burning can barely touch it so you could write in there fingers burning so with that cause and effect relationship that's a negative relationship so we wouldn't say that i'm enjoying the popcorn and just remind your kids that teeter transition totter uh c transition saw before i can see uh if this is the right answer i ha i had to make sure that i saw what was causing it and so just like the alphabet where c comes before e causes come before effects in a relationship and so i was able to do a cause and effect teeter-totter there to help me eliminate letter d okay it was a negative experience uh letter c was just some facts that were happening and so the letter i'm going to pick ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, select one select one and if you select you've already shown me why you're going to select it because amazing and delicious our positive opinions will be able to pick letter b in the book or in the computer screen and you'll be able to submit letter b and if you're doing paper and pencil again a reminder is to make sure they connect evens and odds correctly put the b next to the five so that the five b in your book is sort of like your left shoe and your 5b on the scantron would be your right shoe and those shoes have to match so taking a 36 question test it would be like having 36 different pairs of shoes that have to match one correct answer this year for each question so there you have it i hope that that was helpful and I would really suggest that you teach your students how to connect to the character's voice, that heart, feelings and emotion connection, and that head, thoughts and opinions, point of view, perspective, the way I see the world. There's a saying, um, the world doesn't change when you take off your glasses, just the way you see it changes. And so we were able to see the kitchen world from the speaker's point of view he doesn't like getting burned but he thinks that the popcorn tastes amazing and is very delicious and so an extension might be let's come off popcorn if you don't like popcorn what is delicious to you what is your opinion of delicious or amazing food thank you guys so much please share or tag one of your reading teacher friends for this video. Let me know what you liked about it in the comment section. I have a special prize for somebody who takes the time to do that. Um, this is included, this passage is included for free for any of you who purchase the binder on special that I'll have until next Friday. And I'll go over a couple of more of the questions. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you so much to the hundreds of you that purchased the binder on sale yesterday or today. And for the encouragement that I got from many of you after listening to my wife singing My Redeemer Lives and hopefully encouraging, inspiring you and giving you back your joy again. So you guys take care and God bless.